Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about observations with a microscope. This pertains to the online lab you'll be doing at home this week. The first thing I want to go over with you guys is the parts of the microscope. The base and the arms support all parts of the microscope. The ocular lenses is the part of the microscope that you view your specimen through. The light source focuses light onto the condenser, which uses a system of lenses to focus light onto the specimen. You can use the diaphragm to adjust the amount of light striking the specimen. Your specimen will be placed on the stage and secured by the mechanical stage. The objective lenses are mounted on a revolving nose piece and each one of them can contain a complex lens system to help you view your specimen better. Total magnification is something we use to describe how we see our specimen. Multiplying the magnification of the objective lens by the magnification of the ocular lens is how we're going to find total magnification. The ocular lens magnification is always 10x. The objective lens is a magnification that does change. If the objective lens is 4x, then you would multiply that with the ocular lens magnification, which is 10x, to get a total magnification of 40. On the last bullet point, you will see an equation to give you total magnification. Another example is if the objective lens is 10, you'll multiply it by the ocular lens, which is also 10, and get a total magnification of 100. Some quick notes about microscope use, because you will be using a microscope in class in future labs. You always want to carry your microscope with two hands, one underneath the base and the other on the arm. You never want to touch any of the lenses with your fingers because you could scratch them and they're very expensive, so always use lens paper to clean them. You will always start at the lowest power and use the course adjustment to move the stage. Once you have moved to a higher power, you will no longer use the course adjustment adjustment you will only use the fine adjustment and you can always use the diaphragm to adjust the light. The stage clip should also never be on top of the slide. Now that we've talked about the microscope some, I want to introduce you guys to some cellular structures. First let's talk about the three domains of life. They are bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. The cells of the human body belong to the eukarya domain of life. Eukaryotic cells are larger than prokaryotic cells they contain membrane-bound organelles and possess a nucleus. First, I'm going to talk about the organelles in an animal cell. The nucleus is the part of the cell that contains most of the genetic information. The nuclear envelope surrounds the nucleus and is made up of a protein layer to allow things in and out of the nucleus. Chromatin contains DNA and structural proteins, and the nucleolus is where ribosomes are formed. The endomembrane system is a group of membranes and organelles in the eukaryotic cells that work together to modify, package, and transport lipids and proteins. The Golgi apparatus is involved in sorting, tagging, packaging, and the distribution of proteins and lipids. The endoplasmic reticulum, or the ER, has two parts, the rough ER and the smooth ER. The rough ER has ribosomes and insert proteins that are then modified and ready for the Golgi apparatus. The smooth ER is involved in the synthesis of carbohydrates, lipids, and steroid hormones, and it also has detoxifying properties. Lysosomes contain digestive enzymes that work as an organelle recycling part of cell. This means that if there is another organelle that has no use to the cell any longer, the lysosome will work to break it down. Protein synthesis occurs in ribosomes. The mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell breaking down fuel and capturing energy. Cytoplasm is the inside of the cell from the plasma membrane to the nuclear envelope that contains all the organelles. It is made up of cytosol. The plasma membrane is a double layer of lipids that separates the cell interior from the outside environment. The cytoskeleton is a skeletal structure of the cell made up of protein filaments and tubules. Now we're going to talk about the organelles in the plant cell. They have the other organelles from the animal cell, but have a few differences. The chloroplast carries out photosynthesis, which obviously doesn't happen in animals. The cell wall is another part that's different. It's a rigid covering surrounding the cell, protecting it from the outside and giving it support and shape. Animal cells just have a plasma membrane. 
Cell walls have a plasma membrane as well, but the cell wall is on the outside of that. Plant cells also have a central vacuole that stores water and waste, isolates hazardous material, and has an enzyme that can break down macromolecules and cellular components. The cell has external structures as well. Cilia are hair-like projections of the cell membrane. Microvilli are generally smaller than cilia, but very similar. The flagellum are external features that is like a whip. As you can see, there is a clear difference in the pictures at the bottom of the slide. The only cell in the human body that contains flagellum are sperm cells. Now to the part of the lab that you'll actually be doing. So you're going to be using a microscope simulation. The first thing you're going to be doing is the part that's called finding the E. You're going to be finding a typed E on the microscope. When you're looking at the E through the microscope, I want you to keep these questions in mind. What does it look like? Is this what you would normally see if you were just looking at it with the naked eye? And why does it look the way it looks? The next thing I want to talk about in your lab is the simulation of the cheek cell. We would normally prepare the slide in class, and this is how we would do it. You would place a small drop of water on the slide, then use a toothpick to swab the inside of your cheek. Using that toothpick, you would slide it through the water in one direction. Then we would place a cover slip carefully so there would be no air bubbles, and then use a dye to eliminate the cells of the cheek. You would start at the lowest power using the course adjustment like we mentioned before and then change the power. You would never use the course adjustment again, just the fine adjustment. When you're looking at this through the simulation, keep in mind what you're looking at. Maybe you could be looking at organelles. If so, which ones? The last two things you're going to be looking at through the simulation are the onion root and the bacteria capsule. Remember the onion root is going to be a plant cell, so remember to look for the cell wall. The bacteria capsule is going to be a little different than the other cells you looked at because it has a polysaccharide layer forming around the capsule that keeps it protected.